are we even talking about socialism in the, the United States right now? It's because we put so many women into positions of power that that seems like a good idea. Yeah. It makes them feel good. Hey, you get one and you get one and you get one and you get Jesus. one and you and so merit. It's got to be like so, it's so attractive, and I understand. Like I, I get the draw of it. Like it's super nice if like my one pet issue just happens to be the thing that can describe all the ills of humanity. But I mean, like at some point, do you not feel like a little bit like ah? Uh, Maybe I'm trying really hard to shoehorn in an explanation for every single social ill with like my particular pet project. What do you see as the future of the sexual marketplace and intersexual dynamics between men and women and the RP in the future? We're going to shut up and let you go. Please take it away. All right. Uh, for women, I see a lot of loneliness on the, uh, on the horizon. And I, I don't say that to be like an asshole. I, I say that as sort of a warning. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot, like whenever a guy says, oh, you're going to be lonely and cat lady and you're going to have box wine and, and whatever, like, and you're going to be a spinster is basically what, what they're saying. And it sounds like revenge. It sounds like guys are either too happy or they're too pissed off or too too sad about like the state of women. I, I just go down to nuts and bolts. And I uh, outline this actually in book four as well. Um, there is a study by Morgan Stanley um, Financial. They did a, uh, you can go find it too. It's, uh, it's online. It's called The Rise of the She Economy. And in that, um, in that sort of research, um, they postulate that by 2030, uh, women between the ages of 25 and 44, uh, something like 52%, I hope I'm getting my numbers right, something like 45 to 52%. It's over half. Yeah, over It half is going to be over half. Yep. Of women of marriageable age will be single for the rest of their lives. They will not, they will not <laughs> reproduce unless they get like, unless, you know, unless they get artificial insemination, but they will not, they will be unmarried and childless during those mm -hmm. ages by 2030, which is like a very, very steep incline. In fact, they are so certain of this that they did this research on Morgan Stanley so their investors would know what to invest in in the coming decade. Wow. So they're <laughs> invest in box wine, right? And yep. invest in cat toys, invest in- um, Yeah, in, it's not a joke, guys, when we say in, this. In ovum freezing, in, in uh, reproductive technology. And pet dogs. Uh, yeah, cats, dogs, whatever, you know, what what is going to be hot in the future? And this is what you can expect. And so this is what you should put your money into. So if we're, if we're already making predictions of where we should put our money, I think we need to look at why this is the way it is. Now, if you go and you follow the logic of, of Bloomberg or, or um, you know, Morgan Stanley, Forbes, whatever, they will say this is a great success. This is a, a glowing, great progress of humanity. Well, finally, women are independent. <laughs> you never you hear women say, I, like we heard last night from uh, the 20-year-old girl, yeah. I want to give up my independence, right? Okay, <laughs> I, and I wanted to say this, but I didn't. Um, independent of what? Independ like you're, if, so if you're independent of something, what were you dependent on that you're now independent of? Right. And whenever we hear this, remember I was telling you about how um, we've been hearing the same jingo, the same lingo from feminists for a long time. That's one of them. I want to be a strong, independent woman. Okay. Independent of what? Independent of men. That's what it is. And we've already, they've already achieved that. They've, there's more women in college right now. They're making more money now. Uh, they, women control way more money than men do. Yeah. So when you're talking about like the 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 bullshit of the uh, the pay, uh, pay, gender pay wage gap, whatever yeah. it is, it's not endemic sexism. If there's any gap, there's a gap in spending. There's a gap in control and authority mm -hmm. over that spending. Women are the number one consumers in Western societies as it is. But they also control, and again, another stat in the book is over the course of a family's history, women will control 90% of that family's wealth. Yep. That's car expenditures, that's college, that's we're gonna go on vacation, we're gonna buy this TV set. Okay, that, I mean like, sure, maybe, but I, all of this is like presented in like kind of a weird way. Like if the woman is the one that, and I think this is generally true, women are generally the ones that do the, um, that do the shopping. 
So, I mean, like in a way, they kind of quote unquote control the wealth, but it's a little bit misleading. They're not the ones earning the money and they're, they're shopping to, um, to, to like pay for the family, right? It's not like women are getting all the like 80, 90% of the wealth and then buying like Gucci bags. I mean, I guess maybe some are, but. <clears throat> that this kind of stuff, women, if they're not making the money, they're directing the, the flow of where those, that currency is going to. So don't give me this bullshit about, well, we need to make as much money as a man. And it's because of this endemic sexism and the patriarchy. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> because you're the one spending the money. And I got the stats to show you. But, uh, I, I feel like after talking to Myron, I feel like talking to somebody like this would be way less interesting. Um, it's just kind of silly, but uh, whatever that right now bam, bam son where'd <laughs> you find this? and i'll say this real quick rollo women spend so much money that a male company like gillette will risk losing business financial ruin to yes. crap on men so that they can appease to women because they understand even with male razors women are the predominant consumers so that right. goes to show you guys how strong Women like how strong what? women are the consumer base in the West, man. Even male companies are ostracizing their own target audience yes. to sell to women. Also, Sorry, Rolo, I'll add to that as oh, well. So, a lot of people don't know this right, but behind a lot of tech companies, I think they're talking about that, like the anti-rape commercial they made. Maybe they're really mad about that commercial. It might have probably triggered somebody. I guess I don't know. Our female employees. Yep, and they control the flow. Attitude and Fresh used to work too. for a tech company, guys. Yeah. This comes from experience. They control the flow of how things are put out now like you guys said women control the customer base for most for most uh, things so get this right a lot of our content is not geared towards women so what does it do suppress it and oftentimes delete it because mm -hmm. it's, it's not going to be uh suitable for their uh consumers which is women yep so yeah that's that's very true so, big facts sorry so I'll, I'll here's here's another uh, prediction prognostication for the future mm -hmm. uh we live in the most emotionalized uh, oh my society God. the world has ever known right Facts. now. Facts. Everything is feels before reels. We say this all the time in the manosphere and we yeah. joke about it, but it's really true. We live in an age, and I make the case for it in book four, uh, our religion is emotionalism right now. It's mm -hmm. how did it make you feel? At, like as opposed to what? When the rationality of man ruled? Every man is like a perfectly rational being or like men allowed like fact and, and, and logic to dictate? Like, come on, dude. Do people really think we're that different? Like, is this true? Feel. Yep. Uh, what Our are you, TikTok what are, getting banned is an example of that. Feeling. Yes, <laughs> yeah. exactly. You know, because punish made, women for bad behavior. So, oh, feelings. So when I when I get criticized by women, it's usually for my tone. Yeah. Right. Well, if you would just say it with sweet little sappy show you sugarcoat what you're saying, then women will women will respond to it. No, it's not how I'm saying something. It's the data that I'm imparting to you yep. that is offending you because it goes against the the what is you know an ego invested belief for that woman it feels bad and i get it it's supposed to feel bad because if it's not feeling bad then you're not going to it's not going to motivate you to change yes so in the future I, and i don't know when we're going to reach critical mass but right now we're even that doesn't make sense there's like there's no self-help or self-improvement course that's taken seriously that ha like produces results for people that works that starts with making you feel bad that's like and you'd think there'd be like a lot of crossover between like red pill and self-help, but I don't know if there is because it's not real self-help. It's usually bullshit self-help because most of those communities aren't like people that are massively improving their lives because generally the things they're told is to like fucking sell crypto and get shredded. Like, but like... We're in the age of emotionalism. We're in the age of ego and the age of emotionalism. And so we base our policies, whether it's political, whether it's economic, whether it, whatever it is based on our emotional response to things. We have a, we have t at least the last three generations of men who've been conditioned and you want know, blue pill conditioning, uh, have been trained to emote like women, to to see emotional, like they've been trained and taught that women, the way that women process emotion is the correct way to process emotion. Facts. So when we say, oh, that man is, he's, he's toxically masculine. He's not in touch with his feelings, right? He's a, uh, he needs to express himself emotionally. He needs to get in touch with his feminine side. All that stuff we've been talking about since the seventies. The reason why that's still a thing right now is because it's a great means of control over those guys so that they will, they will identify and align with the feminine, which is all based on emotion. 
So when we talk about like the emotional children that are out rioting in the streets right now and they're tearing down statues and like, don't they know that that statue is this? And they're not thinking rationally. They're not thinking with reason. They're thinking emotionally because those last three, four generations have been taught to emote like women, to yep. be like woman. Woman is correct. Transgenderism, right? Why is it that more boys want to be girls than girls want to be boys? Mm. Because it's more advantageous socially to be a girl in a gynocentric social order than it is to be a man because nobody wants to be a, nobody wants to be a dad. Dads are assholes. Boys are toxically masculine. We got to give him Ritalin. We got to give him Adderall. We got to give him sedate that boy with with drugs, with with opiates, with alcohol, with pornography, sedate him, sedate him, sedate him, sedate him. Don't let him do anything because if you let him do anything, he might turn toxic. He might turn violent. And it's all, it's all because we want to put men into, we want to force fit them into this uh, emotional correctism. Whatever is female is correct. Yep. And so if you wow. are brought up that way, you're going to vote that way. You're going to look for jobs that way. You're yeah. going to you're going to relate with people that way. Guys, have one the number one thing, guys, and I'm sure you've already got this. Um, guys will come to me for counseling or ca coaching or whatever the hell it is, right? And they'll say, "Rolo, I don't know how to interrelate with guys. I don't know. Mm. I don't know how to talk to guys. I don't. I, 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 there's guys I want to hang out. With. I, I always talk about tribalism, or I yep, talk about yep. like it's you, very important for men. Yeah, there's we have our little tribe. This is a tribe right, right here. here. Yep. Okay. Um, how, do you have tribes? And they don't. And the reason they don't is because they've been taught to emote and to relate to men as if they are women. Yeah. And that's and that's what's valuable and that's what makes them valuable. And that's how they get their self-worth. So it's no shock to me when guys are in the black pill community or a blue pill or purple pill or whatever it is, they don't they don't want to make women the measurement of their lives, but they still emote and they still relate with people as if they have a feminine sort of training. So when we look at things like communitarianism, we look at socialism, we look at like, why is why, why are we even talking about socialism in the, the United States right now? It's because we put so many women into positions of power that that seems like a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> it makes them feel good. Hey, you get one and you get one and you get one and you get Jesus. one and you, and so merit. It's gotta be like, so, it's so attractive. And I understand, like, I, I get the draw of it. Like, it's super nice if like, my one pet issue just happens to be the thing that can describe all the ills of humanity. But I mean, like at some point, do you not feel like a little bit like, uh, maybe I'm trying really hard to shoehorn in an explanation for every single social ill with like my particular pet project, like my particular thing that I care about. Doesn't it feel like at some point, like, okay, maybe I'm stretching a little bit. Why have video games gotten so much worse? Well, mechanics of the quick time events have gotten more popular because women have less reaction time. And so QTEs are not like, I, I like, I, it just feels like, uh, whatever regardless of how poorly you are working Dom dominance hierarchies uh competence hierarchies meritocracy all of that stuff flies out the window because we don't see the value in it because bring it's him not on hey, if correct. this guy ever wanted to come yeah. on a chat a I would, sure, but. whenever women come into political power whenever you get an aoc whenever whenever <laughs> you get a woman who, who uh, gets into congress or the yeah. senate the first thing they do their first priority, their number one priority, is not to their constituency. It is to the fe it is to the female purpose. It is to the sisterhood uberalis. Camilla Harris. So, so you got. I, I was going to say you get you get women who go in there, and the first thing they talk about is we need to legalize abortion. We need to yes. change up divorce laws. We need to change these things. We need all of these things that we think are so horribly unfair, and it all becomes about women's issues and not. All of our issues yep. are called, like, how are we going to govern? It doesn't matter as long as women get theirs, as long as the sisterhood is served. I can go on forever. I don't want to go on forever about yeah, that, yeah. but I talk uh, in a, a great extent about the sisterhood Uber Alice in this book. That's where I see us going. That's where you see us is going? We're okay. going to be, our, our politics are emotionalized. Our, our 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 media, our entertainment is all emotional. Yes, yep. Terminator our with a female actress, are, yep. James Bond. Are, everything yep. is feminized and everything is emotionalized primarily right now. And we think that that's going to sell more movies and more more. It's backfiring. I'll, I'll leave you with this. What's Remember backfiring? When, uh, the Star Wars movies. The the are you. I know you're. I know John's a Star Wars fan. Yeah. And the last three Star Wars movies were. Just, they I just, think he's working backwards yeah. from his and, conclusions And the reason for that women. is because they don't know how to write the hero's journey. That it's it's a male specific like thing, right? Yeah. Men must become. Yes. We have a burden. No, hold on. That is so wrong. The hero's journey doesn't have anything intrinsically to do with a man. You can write that story for a woman. That is absolutely not correct. Number one. Number two. You know, love him or hate him. Okay, I'm gonna run the risk at looking like a loser here. Okay, 
my guess is that all three of those Star Wars sequels um, probably grossed over a billion dollars each. That's my guess. Maybe they didn't. We've got 1.33 billion here. 1.074 billion here. What was the name of the final movie? I don't even remember the name of... Well, fuck. Is this The Last Jedi, The Rise of Skywalker? What was the... What was the other one called? The Force Awakens. Gross $2 billion. So, I mean, it's obviously not failing. You can criticize it for whatever you want, but like people are watching it. How can you say that the hero's journey is male exclusive? God, the worst thing that people do is they make their, when they make their media takes, like they try to like shoehorn that into their like political ideology. Like, oh yeah, like, did you know that you can't have a, you can't have like a true hero's journey with a female protect? Yeah, you can. What are you talking about, bro? How many Disney movies? Have you seen Mulan? Like what the fuck? Sorry, okay. performance and we go through these trials and tribulations to become something right yeah. whereas when you get like ray she already is she's a mary sue right she's already oh, i know how to look, use a lightsaber just yep. magically right yep. didn't have to do that well the reason why we think that that's a good idea is because the writers who put that together were are from that generation of emotionalism and so we have a mary sue written as if it's a, a that this is a male character we're just going to give her tits and a vagina and then that's give her that's the power from the beginning yeah and so we, well, because we think, or because this emotional society thinks that that's what... Wait, because it's a male character, the, the you shouldn't have Mary Sue's, whether they're male or female. <laughs> that's just bad writing. Um, now, they might have been inspired to make her a Mary Sue because she's a female character. That's possible. I think I've given that criticism before. But, like, they weren't making her a male character. They were just making it a shit character. Like, even male characters shouldn't start off like that. The fan base wants to see. They want to see this powerful, we need more powerful women and strong women and independent women leads in our movies. And you know what's kicking their ass? Mandalorian with a little baby. That's what women want Damn. is baby, they want Grogu. I'm, God, it just, it makes my asshole clench. They want baby Yoda. They don't want ass kicking mama yep. Ray. They want baby Yoda is what they want, maternity because that's an innate drive in women. An innate drive in women is not, oh, I'm gonna learn a lightsaber and learn how to kick ass and take names. That's a man's job. Yep. And on our on our root lizard brain, on our pineal gland brain, we, we understand that, we recognize that. We re that's part of the machine. Truth bomb time right now. Anyone that was alive in the 90s, famous movie that came out from Disney, Mulan, okay? <laughs> in the movie, what oh, happens? Man. A woman must become, right? She mm -hmm. learns, in the beginning, she didn't know how to fight. She gets her ass kicked. She can't, like, you know, hop the things, whatever, shoot the bow and arrows. But what do they do? The song, be a man, you must be, you know what I'm saying? You must become in the song, oh, right? And then she learns the skills. Oh, my God. It's part of the theme. It's ironic. That's the joke. The whole point of the song and everything is that, like, you're a woman, be a man. It's a joke because she's not actually a man. It's part of the theme of the movie is her wrestling with the fact that she is, like, a woman but is still trying to accomplish things that a man does. It wasn't actually literally telling her to be a man. No. <laughs> oh, God. She learns how to fight, she, and she does this all with a masculine frame of reference. That movie did excellent. Why? Because she had to become. Even a woman had to adhere to masculine traits to be able hero's to get journey. the entertainment value. Hero's the hero's journey. Hero's no journey one is cares. A masculine story. It's a masculine story every single time, even if you put a woman in the lead. And Mulan is an excellent example of that. When did that movie come out? In the fucking 90s. Not That would never come nowadays, right? Because a woman having to become, what? Ugh. And that's and now here's the thing. Hollywood is paying the consequence for being woke. You want to be woke? You're going to oh, go broke. Because at the end of the day, people know deep down that women just are and men must become. And even if you put a woman into a male role, for if you want to get the views and you want to get the entertainment, she still has to become. It, I don't know, man.
How much responsibility do you feel that you have, particularly to go out to the alt right, who, as you say, some of them have enjoyed your work? And so oh, I'm God, not, is this I'm the not one, one you guys. I'm not where she asks <laughs> what female authors? Oh, no. Who is your favorite author? Dostoevsky. Who's your favorite female author? Like, hmm. you're a professor. Come on. You haven't read a single book by a woman. Can't Anne Rice. Pull out some fiction at least. There's got to be something. You got to have something, bro. It's just one. Ha, 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 ha.